FPV drones. If you've stumbled across this video, then you know about these small but powerful racing drones that have made their way into what seems like every single Instagram video. But what they don't tell you is the amount of time and effort it takes to learn what feels like rocket science. In the past, I had used a lot of different Maverick drones a handful of times. So switching to an FPV drone seems like a no-brainer. That was until I crashed it before I even got it into the air. Basically, I had one of my controller stick pushed up, which was the propeller, the throttle, and the other stick facing backwards. So basically, when I turned the controller on and turned the drone on, it just automatically turned on and went like this and just scraped against the ground. Um, so yeah, I never got it up in the air. I used my new DJI drone lots of times in lots of different environments. I even ended up strapping a GoPro on top, but was absolutely terrified to click that one button all the way down to manual mode. If you don't know, in manual mode, you're given full control of your drone, meaning you can flip upside down, backwards, sideways, and everywhere in between. After using it in S mode, which basically makes it like a buffed out Mavic and allows you to go 50 miles per hour, but locks your horizon levels, I felt ready to switch to the big M, manual mode. And unfortunately, like you heard earlier, I didn't even get it off the ground. <laughs> Now that you have this example of what not to do when you buy your first FPV drone. Only guy I know that flies laying down. Let me give you a helpful tool to help you from crashing as much as possible. This tool is what they call a flight simulator. Now there's a few different simulators on the market, but the one that I prefer is called Trip FPV. And I'm gonna give you three reasons why I love this simulator over the others. Starting off with the first reason, the graphics. Trip FPV is created using Unreal Engine 5, which is the same software used to create games like Fortnite, Rocket League, Valorant, Borderlands, and so many more. The difference with this simulator versus others is that others just feel way out of date. In my opinion, they lack the quality and creativeness that I'm used to coming from a gaming background. I love that when I play Trip FPV, it feels like an actual immersive experience, like something I would really experience in real life. Secondly, let's talk about follow objects. I believe as of today in other simulators like Liftoff, you have the option to follow different moving objects, but that option only came out about three months ago, and to be honest, I'm not very impressed. Again, when I think of FPV, I think of insane content that I see on social media from Johnny FPV. <laughs> It's Ken FPV. <laughs> to even Mr. Steel. It doesn't seem as scary when I did it the first time. And in the past, and even now, in my opinion, other simulators just don't give you that same excitement. This problem is completely solved by Trip. Like we talked about before, the graphics are next level, meaning the objects are as well. Not only that, but the uniqueness of these objects are definitely not expected when first downloading the game. You have things like rally cars, dirt bikes, faster dirt bikes, UTVs, parachuters, planes, MotoGP bikes, wingsuits, along with animals and combinations of objects. Overall, having a game with this level of quality, along with the option of following objects, in my opinion, is amazing. When I first started in an FPV simulator, I used liftoff and I always wished that there was an object to follow. Having this option truly shows weak spots in your flying and definitely prepares you for real life scenarios. Now lastly, let's get into price. I know everyone wants to know. Coming in at $13.99, the price for this game is very affordable, considering the amount of game you get and the level that it's at. I feel like it could be priced higher, but I love that they put it at a very competitive price. Other simulators like Liftoff, Velocidrone, and DRL, which are among the most common, roughly range around the same price, so it's definitely a good call going with Trip. Some of the different aspects of the game include cinematic flying mode, where it's basically open world and you can fly however, wherever you want. Next, they have a race option, which gives you the ability to earn different badges for going through checkpoints in certain times, and they even have different customization options like rates, drones, settings, controls, etc. Now that you've heard three reasons why I love Trip as my first simulator option, I'm gonna set up up a two minute timer and show some of the awesome ways that I like to use it. All right, let's start that two minutes. All right, we're gonna try and hit this gap. <laughs> That's hard.
<laughs> I love this game so much. <laughs> Alright, here we go, here we go, come on. Oh, we clipped it, but we made it through. So sick. <laughs> Kind of, <laughs> we'll take it. I have that. I have to get that. Where am I going? No, more than that. Come here, come here. <laughs> I have it, I have it. All right, here we go. <gasps> We're taking it. We're taking it. All right, all right. Guys, I hope this helps in getting started in your journey with FPV. If you have any other questions or things you'd like me to make videos on, let me know. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching.